After the devastating wildfires that have been rampaging across California, as well as many other wildfires in previous years in different states that have destroyed countless homes and buildings, it's time that we start talking about one of the lesser known contributing factors when it comes to the spread of these fires, and that's vented attics. Vented attics are great for many different reasons. They can be made to work in most climates, with most roof forms, and they're very affordable. However, one of the biggest risks when it comes to a vented attic is the increased potential for embers that are in the air during a wildfire to be carried by the wind into these vented attics. Think for a second about how vented attics work. We have a whole bunch of soffit venting, or sometimes gable venting, and some ridge venting. In most cases, if the attic is functioning properly, we get a whole bunch of air entering the soffits, making its way into the attic space, and venting out the top of the ridge via stack effect or air pressure. And so we're more or less drawing air into the attic space. During a wildfire, there's tons of tiny embers in the air that can be transported tens of miles in some cases, and this was one of the reasons why the fires were able to spread so quickly in California. And those embers are sucked into the attic, and there's a high chance of combustion, especially if there's old insulation material that's combustible. So if we want to be serious about fire resistance and rebuilding in a way that can resist these fires in the future, we need to start designing unvented, conditioned attic assemblies in these wildfire areas. Now, of course, there are soffit vents like Vulcan vent that are designed to resist these embers and prevent them from getting into the attic, but the fact is that once the embers are inside, it's pretty much a lost cause if you don't notice it. Now, a lot of people have concerns about unvented conditioned attics. Much of these concerns stem from a misunderstanding around moisture accumulation and venting. Just because the roof assembly is unvented, it doesn't mean that the attic space is unconditioned. In fact, it needs to be conditioned. Conditioned meaning that it's receiving supply and return air that's humidity controlled like any other part of our house. The roof assembly itself is unvented because we're not introducing any outside air. Everything is coupled to the interior. In terms of condensation control in an unvented roof assembly, we have several different options like rigid insulation installed outboard, smart vapor retarders, and spray foam. But in warm climates like California, we actually don't have to change much to create a conditioned attic since the condensation risk is substantially lower. And we can get away with using a simple vapor diffusion port, which allows us to to use a blown-in insulation, very much like what would be installed in a typical vented attic. However, the blown-in insulation is netted and is installed between the rafters rather than over the ceiling joists, eliminating the air gap between the sheathing so that the attic space is now located within the conditioned space. Next, we want to make sure that we're using a peel-and-stick underlayment so that we have a very airtight roof assembly. This is not only important to preventing potential embers from getting into the roof assembly, but it's very important to the overall performance of the roof, as it will eliminate any passive pathways for air to travel in and out of the roof assembly. Now at the ridge, this is where the vapor diffusion port comes in. This is a highly vapor permeable membrane that's airtight and sealed to the roof sheathing and the roof underlayment. Similar to venting vapor at the ridge with airflow in a vented attic, a vapor diffusion port allows moisture to diffuse out of the attic space at the ridge, relying on the concept of hygric buoyancy, a phenomenon in which warm, moisture-laden air is less dense and displaces the drier air, and all of the moisture accumulates at the ridge. The assumption is that the peel-and-stick membrane is impermeable, and that the roof covering is impermeable, and therefore the membrane at the ridge is the one area where moisture can escape. Once the moisture gets to the ridge, we are simply letting it out. But instead of using outside air to let it out, we are using vapor diffusion. The moisture diffuses through the ridge before it has a chance to accumulate and cause condensation, since the sun is often warming the surface of the roof. We'll put some articles in the description which break down the vapor diffusion ports in better detail, but this has been a viable, code-approved solution in warm climates for the past few years now. Finally, we're capping that vapor permeable membrane at the ridge with a standard ridge vent. We need a bit of airflow to allow that moisture that diffuses through the vapor permeable membrane to be carried out, but this should not be confused with venting the roof itself. Now, as we mentioned before, this isn't the only way to design an unvented roof for a conditioned attic assembly. And in fact, we have several videos on this topic which you can go and check out up here, but this happens to be the most cost-effective option if you're trying to make the switch from a vented attic to a conditioned attic in a warm climate, more specifically in California. If you wanted to further improve the fire resistance of the home or building, using some exterior rigid mineral wool insulation is another excellent strategy, as it's like wrapping your entire building in a thick fire blanket, which also happens to be very good for energy efficiency and durability. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in the next few years, and we need to start taking this stuff a lot more seriously, as people's lives literally depend on these types of design decisions, and a lot more homes and buildings and neighborhoods probably could have been saved with a more thoughtful approach, but hindsight is 2020. Our thoughts go out to those affected by these horrific wildfires. 
Let us know if you'd like to see more of these types of videos, and we'll see you in the next one. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos. And head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.